It's time to get on painting the base. I started out painting the base with a light gray, and this was my first mistake and kind of got me frustrated. So the gray that I used is actually almost the same color as the primer, so it didn't show up. So what I did was I started on the electronics. Right now I'm working on our Ralph board. You can find this at shop.hobbylinkinternational.com. The bottom three that I'm pointing at are the channels that's gonna give us our effects. I already pre-tinned this or pre-soldered it. I have a little blob of solder on the B channel. I'm just gonna heat that up with my soldering iron and then I'm gonna push my wire right through and as soon as I take the soldering iron off, it'll be stuck in place. Then I flip the board over, give it a little snip to clean it up and everything's good to go. Next up, I had to put the LEDs down the columns in the front. I added a little extra wire to the bottom of the LED because I'm gonna need that anyhow. And then I'm testing it out inside the pumpkin just to make sure that fits in the column and we don't have any problems with the LED creating a gap. Now I have both LEDs in here, it's time to test the pumpkins. I don't have the effects board hooked up, I just wanna make sure that the lights are working and we have no problem seeing them. Now I had to add the power jack and the power switch to the back. I did cut the power hole for the power switch a little bit too big. So I just took a piece of styrene, cut it in a circle, back plated it this way, it filled up that gap and the power jack went in no problem. Next up was deciding where I was gonna put the yellow LED power strip. I put it on the bottom first, test it out, make sure it works. Now I'm gonna throw the lid on it to see what the logo is gonna look like in the front. And it's not bad. It looks really, really good like this, but you'll see later on I changed my mind and you can see I fixed one corner and I messed up the other corner up top. Now that I fixed both corners, it's time to get to masking. I just used regular blue painter's tape plus a plastic bag to mask off what we've done because now we're gonna work with some sloppy stuff up top. So I took my X-Acto blade and I just cut lines in it every which way I could. This way we add some more grip for the clay. We're gonna be using DOS modeling clay for the base. Don't buy the cheap stuff, you'll regret it. Now I'll just take you through a little time lapse of how I'm putting the glue on, spreading it out and starting to use the clay. Use the skewers to guide me where the holes are and I tried making an impression with the base in the clay, but this didn't work out very well because when I was pushing on the top, I felt like I was gonna crack it. Now that we're waiting for the clay to dry, I'm starting to paint the base. I'm just doing a base layer right now and this is scale 75's petroleum gray. This is gonna go over the whole base. I added a number of different grays to the base, including rainy gray, graphene gray, petroleum gray, brown gray, and these are all from scale 75. And I went over this with a gloss coat, this way we could put a wash on it. I made my own homemade wash, and it's just gonna be a sludge wash. We're gonna wipe this all over the base, and then we're gonna take off what we don't want. After everything was dried up, I just took a Q-tip and water, rubbed everything off to leave the wash in the recesses, make it look a little bit dirtier, and bring out the detail that we have on this kit. Now that everything's all dry, I took my lightest gray possible and I just started dry brushing the high points to give it more detail, bring out everything that I could, give it a little more color dif dif give it a little more color differentiate. I can't say that word. Give it a little more color differentiation. And here's the piece after all the dry brushing. Definitely looks a lot better. We're not done yet, still have a little bit of work to go, but we're getting there. Next up is to seal coat this with Ammo by Migs Ultra Matte.
And here it is after the Ultramat. I really do like this product. It really makes it a dead flat. I do want to try a couple others to see if one can get even flatter than this. Time to work on the individual pieces of the base. Now, this thing's a crazy cat thing. I don't know what it is. They both go on the top of the pillars. We're going to be painting these up in gold. I'm just going to use Folk Arts Metallic Gold here, and I got to thin that down with water because it is pretty thick. The Folk Art Gold goes on really nice. It took about four to five thin coats. There's no brush strokes or anything like that. It's so thin that you just put it on there, let it dry or or blow dry it in between and put your next layer on until you get it a nice solid coat on both pieces. And here's both pieces done up together. Now we just got to get to weathering them. Next up, we're going to work on the fences and the gates. All we're going to do is paint these up black, just a solid black with ammo by MIG, because later on, we're going to go back to the ammo by MIG U rust system and rust these all up. There is an awful lot of black on this kit. So while I have the black in the pot, what we're going to do is pants, his jacket, whatever we can in black. Now it's time to work on the pumpkins, the only colorful thing in this diorama. I'm going to be using scale 75, number 42, Boreal Green, and we're going to do all these stripes around the pumpkin to darken those in before we put the orange over. All I'm doing here is spraying in each of the stripes to darken them up so we get a shadow when we put the orange over top. If you see me go a little heavy, that's because this is my new evolution from Harder and Steenbeck, and my trigger finger is not used to this yet. And here are the two pumpkins. We got them all sprayed up. They're ready to take their orange top coat and start looking hopefully better. I'm using ammo by MIGS Orange, just a plain orange, and I'm gonna go heavier in between each of the stripes. And then once I'm going over those stripes, I'm gonna go a little lighter because I want that green to show it through. This way we get kind of a shadow and the pumpkin isn't just one solid orange color. Now that the orange is on, we're just painting the stalk up at the top green and get that done. And then we can move on to the next part. These pumpkins weren't created perfectly. They do have little chunks taken out of them to make them look worn. So we're going to have to do something with a little bit of a lighter color in there. And we're also going to have to do the insides of the eyes and the mouth. For all the chunks that were taken out in the pumpkin, what I did was I mixed up Mars orange and Soul yellow from scale 75. And I really, really watered it down. It's not even a wash. It might be a glaze, but it's super watered. I just put it in there. I let it dry. And if it needed more, I added more later. This way I could bring out that color and have it look different from the orange on the outside of the pumpkin. I'm going to take that same Mars orange and soul yellow mix, except I'm not watering it down. I'm using it as a regular consistency, regularly thinned. And I'm going to do that across the teeth or the, the cutout of the teeth and the cutout of the eyes and also the inside of the pumpkin. This way it doesn't look like the outside of the pumpkin because the inside meat of the pumpkin is always a different color. So we'll get this on here, have that contrast, and it'll make the pumpkin look better. And here are both pumpkins pumpkins done up the camera is just picking it up is really bright it's not this bright and you can actually see detail on it unfortunately the camera's not doing a good job of picking up the detail i did mess up the top there i gotta touch that up but the next thing we're gonna do is clear coat these and we're actually gonna use all three a glossy a satin and an ultra matte on the pumpkin for the outside of the pumpkin, I used my airbrush and I used the satin. This way it gave it a little bit of a shine, not ultra glossy or anything like that. And then for the top stalk, I just painted on the ultra matte to make that really, really dull. And for the mouth and the inside of the pumpkin and also the eyes, I used the gloss to make it look more shiny like it's wet from when you're cutting open a pumpkin and getting it ready for Halloween. And here I am, I'm just using a brush with the gloss to get inside the eyes, the mouth, and then really deep inside of the cavity of the pumpkin. This way we could get that all glossy. And like I said before, here on the top stem, I'm just using the ultra matte to make that dead flat. Now that the pumpkins are finally done, it's time to affix the LEDs into them. Like I said, when I was working in Cheetah Box, I made these circles perfect. This way, the three millimeter LED would go right up in there and I could just put a little bit of DAP rapid fuse on there and also a little kicker to hold everything in place. And we'll do a little test just to make sure because we never know if we bent that resistor and broke any, anything on there and everything is looking good and we could get these guys onto the base permanently. And and here's our pumpkins attached to the base. I have the lights on. We know those are good. Now let's test it with the effects board. We have the Ralph hooked up. You can see them flickering, but it's not the greatest in the bright light. You can see it, but let me show you in a little dimmer light. And here they are in a low light situation. You can see them flickering like candles. I got to thank Spence and Tommy for working on this. Like I said, you can pick this board up at shop.hobbylinkinternational.com. 
And finally, totally in the dark, you can see the pumpkin's eyes and mouth, but you can't see the pumpkins because it's so dark. But it is a cool effect, and I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you join us for the next video where we use the U-Rust system, finish painting up Jack, finishing the display base, and showing the finished product.